One of the most beneficial reasons for using visualizations is to be able to discover answers to questions much faster than using data alone. How does this happen? As humans, we devote a large amount of our cognitive ability toward pattern recognition, so we are often able to spot trends visually much faster than we can from viewing data in a spreadsheet or database. Thus, in Section 5, we will be building a scatter plot to answer the question of which countries are growing the fastest in terms of exports. In this video, we will be using trade data from the Observatory of Economic Complexity via their Open API. This will be a great exercise in getting to know how to use external data sources from public resources. For our game plan in this video, we'll start by looking at the Observatory of Economic Complexities API to learn how to query their data set. We'll learn the structure of the data calls and test them in our browser to make sure they work and are fetching the data we need. We'll then look at the D3 documentation for loading external resources via XHR methods. XHR requests do not require a full page refresh and instead load data in the background. Finally, we'll put all of this together and begin writing our scatterplot code by fetching the data for 2010 and 2011 exports by country and formatting them into a keyed object to feed into our scatterplot in the next video. So let's get started by looking at MIT's Atlas Media site. We'll see a search box on the home page, and if we navigate to the About section, we'll see a link for the API. Let's click that. We can now see that there are two different ways we can use this API, either to embed a visualization or to query for the data itself, which is what we'll be doing. So let's click on the data link. Looking at the documentation, we can see that the basic call structure of the API requires us to specify the following variables. Classification, trade flow, year, origin, destination, and product. Reading the documentation further, we can learn what values can be used for each of the variables. Classification can be one of SITC or HS, which are simply two different product classifications. Trade flow can be either export or import. The year can be any year between 1962 and 2012 for the SITC classification of data, or 1995 and 2012 for the HS classification. Origin and destination are both three-letter country codes which can be found by using the search box. Product is a four-digit product code for either SITC or HS products, also searchable on the site. Scrolling down, we can see examples of different data calls and what they return. There are two other keywords we can use for some of the variables, show and all. For example, if we look at the first example for querying for total trade by country, we see that the example URL structure is a classification of HS. Trade flow is export. The year is 2010. Origin is show. Destination is set to all. And product is all. In English, this URL would say, we would like to view or show all export data from origin countries in the HS classification. The all keyword specifies that we are not specifying the variables destination and product, so we want it to return all individual values. Now if we copy and paste this URL into our browser, we can see the results of the data query. It appears that there is an object with one key, data, that contains a list of every country and their export amount as well as some other information that we're currently not really interested in using. One thing you may notice that we're missing are the names of these countries. All we have are the database IDs used for them. Scrolling up a little bit in the API documentation, you'll find a section called Attribute Lookups. We can use these API calls to get the names and other detailed data about both countries and products. So now that we know how the Observatory's API works, we'll need to figure out how to request this data from our application. We do this through what is called an XHR request in JavaScript. The XHR request is how we make background data requests to external resources. 
Luckily, D3 has a great interface that takes a lot of the heavy lifting off our shoulders. If we pull up the D3 documentation, we can see the different methods we could use for this. There are many different methods that enable the user to request specific data type resources. For example, there is D3.CSV, which is tailored to accept comma-separated value data and format it appropriately. There is also the D3.JSON method, which we will be using for the request of JSON data from the observatory. These methods are all shorthand for the more generic D3.XHR method, which can be customized to perform more specific tasks. Now that we're somewhat familiar with how the D3XHR API works, and we know which data calls we'll need to make, let's get to writing our application. We'll start once again with the basic HTML5 template page. Copy template.html to index5.html and let's work with this file. We'll write a very similar code block to the sampled d3.json code. In fact, let's just copy and paste that from the d3 documentation. We'll just need to change the URL to the one we tested earlier. If we run this in our browser and open our console, we should see the following. We can explore this data and learn about its structure and see how we can use it for our scatter plot. Since we'll be comparing two years worth of data, we really need to make two separate JSON XHR calls. So let's embed a second call within the first. We also want to merge these two data sets. The easiest way to do this would be to create a keyed object with the IDs of our countries, or origin under bar ID. So first we'll initialize our global data variable to an object. We'll then loop through our 2010 data and create new objects for each item in the array with the origin ID for the key. This object will then contain a 2010 export value and the origin ID within it. Then we can do the same for our 2011 data, but instead of creating a new object, we can test if one already exists and add its 2011 export value if it does. If it does not exist, we do not want to create a new object, because our scatter plot will only be able to show items that have both 2010 and 2011 export values to align with the X and Y axes, respectively. Now if we test this in the browser, we'll see our new keyed object with data from 2010 and 2011, as well as its ID. Well, that was fun. Now that we have our data, we can finally begin drawing our scatter plot. This is what we'll be doing in our next video.